Welcome back to the Leadership Cheat Code, where we unlock the cheat code to effective leadership. My name is Brian Vaughn. Today, I'll be discussing five effective strategies that can help you inspire and engage your team. By implementing these strategies, you'll foster a positive atmosphere that drives productivity and job satisfaction. So let's dive right in. Strategy number one is to encourage open communication. One of the key factors in creating a motivational work environment is fostering open communication. When employees feel heard and valued, they become more engaged and motivated. Here are a few tips to encourage open communication. Number one, idea incubation rooms. Create designated idea incubation rooms within the workplace physical or virtual workspaces where employees can gather and brainstorm freely. Fill these spaces with tools like whiteboards, sticky notes, and other creative aids to facilitate idea generation. Encourage employees to schedule time for innovative thinking and provide opportunities for cross-departmental collaboration within these rooms. Number two is Innovation Time Off, or ITO for short. Dedicate specific hours or days each month solely for innovation and open discussions. During ITO, employees can work on personal projects, experiment with new ideas, or participate in workshops and team building activities. This dedicated time fosters creativity and allows employees to share their innovative projects and findings with their colleagues, encouraging a culture of open sharing and learning. Number three is communication buddy system. Implement a communication buddy system where employees from different departments or teams are randomly paired up as communication buddies for a week or a month. During this period, the buddies can schedule short and formal meetings or virtual coffee breaks to chat about non-work related topics, or they can use this time to exchange ideas on how to improve team communication. This approach fosters cross-team connections and helps break down silos, encouraging open communication. Number four, anonymous suggestion box 2.0. Traditional suggestion boxes can be outdated and lack engagement. Upgrade the concept by creating an anonymous suggestion box 2.0 where employees can submit their ideas and feedback anonymously through secure online platforms. To take it further, host monthly or quarterly idea evaluation sessions where a diverse group of employees collaboratively review and discuss the suggestions, brainstorming potential solutions, and implementing the most promising ones. Okay, so here's our second strategy, which is to provide opportunities for growth and development. Employees who see a path for personal and professional growth are more likely to stay motivated and committed to their work. So let's explore some tips for providing those opportunities for growth and development. Tip number one, is job crafting workshops. Organize workshops or training sessions that encourage job crafting. Job crafting allows employees to customize their roles by aligning their strengths, their passions, and skills with their responsibilities. Invite employees to explore how they can shape their roles to better suit their interests and talents, fostering a sense of ownership and empowerment in their work. Number two is unconventional skill exchange. Organize skill exchange sessions where employees from different departments or teams can come together to teach and to learn from one another. For example, a marketing expert could teach graphic design basics to someone from finance, while the finance employee could share some financial analysis techniques in return. This cross-functional knowledge sharing promotes collaboration, it expands employee skill sets, and it also fosters a deeper understanding of the organization as a whole. Number three are personal development grants. Provide personal development grants that employees can use to pursue educational courses or workshops or certifications outside of their immediate job requirements. Encourage them to explore areas of interest beyond their current job roles, such as leadership development, language learning, or creative pursuits. This not only supports their personal growth, but also benefits the company by enhancing the overall skill diversity within the workforce. And then number four, experiential learning challenges. Create experiential learning challenges or growth projects that encourage employees to step outside of their comfort zones and tackle real world business problems. These challenges could involve cross-functional collaboration, problem solving, or innovation. 
Offering recognition and rewards for successful completion of these projects will motivate employees to actively seek out growth opportunities. All right, so let's go to strategy number three, which is to recognize and reward achievements. Acknowledging and rewarding employees' achievements is a powerful way to create a motivational work environment. So here are a few tips for recognizing and rewarding achievements in the workplace. Number one, personalized experiences. Instead of those generic rewards that we normally get, take time to tailor the recognition to each individual's interests and preferences. For example, if an employee is a food enthusiast, treat them to a private cooking class or a gourmet dining experience. For someone who may be a nature lover, offer a weekend getaway to a scenic location. These types of personal touches show that you as a leader genuinely value and understand your employees, making the recognition more meaningful and memorable. Number two are skill development sponsorships. Recognize achievements by investing in employees' professional growth. Offer them a chance to attend workshops and conferences and courses related to their career interests with all expenses covered by the company. That, that is when you know as an employee that your company truly has your back. When you don't have to go through all the hoopla to attend a conference or a course or a workshop that is within your career role and your career interests. This not only shows that the organization appreciates you, but it also encourages ongoing learning and development for all employees across the board because this benefits the individual because they're going to be learning skills and knowledge and growing their competency to help the organization function and to do better and to be better. So it's a win-win for all parties involved. Number three is charity contribution in their name. Allow the employee to choose a cause or a charity that is close to their heart and make a significant donation to that charity in their name. This approach not only recognizes their achievements, but also reinforces the value of giving back and corporate social responsibility within the company. And number four, peer-to-peer -peer recognition programs. Implement a peer-to-peer -peer recognition program where employees can nominate their colleagues for exceptional achievements or acts of support. These nominations can be reviewed periodically and deserving individuals can receive unique rewards such as a day off, a gift card for their particular hobby or interest, or a specially curated thank you gift package. This fosters a positive and collaborative culture where employees actively support and appreciate each other's efforts. On to strategy number four, which is to foster a positive work-life balance. Maintaining a healthy work-life balance is crucial for employees' well-being and motivation. So here are some tips to foster a positive work-life balance for employees. Number one, sabbatical for skill enhancement. Offer employees the option to take a sabbatical not just for rest, but for skill enhancement and personal growth. Encourage them to pursue a passion project, take up a course, or engage in volunteering opportunities during this sabbatical. This allows employees to recharge while gaining new experiences, enriching both their personal and professional lives. Number two is unplugged meetings. Institute unplugged meetings as a regular practice. In these meetings, all electronic devices are prohibited. Turn them off, put them away. Participants can use regular pens and paper as we used to do back in the day before our tablets and notepads, uh, digital notepads and things like that came came about. Go back to those original pen and paper. Have them break out the trapper keeper that we used to have back in school. But anyway, right? They, they can use the regular pens and papers to jot down all of their notes and their ideas. This way, it helps them to disconnect and free themselves from these types of digital distractions where employees can fully engage more deeply in the discussions and focus on the present moment, leading to more productive meetings and reduced burnout. Number three is to implement energy recharge zones. Create designated energy recharge zones within the workplace. These spaces can be set up with comfortable seating, plants, soothing music, or even meditation corners. Encourage employees to use these areas during their breaks or whenever they feel overwhelmed. It provides a dedicated space for relaxation and rejuvenation, helping to maintain a healthier work-life balance. Now, if you are not in the office, there are other things that you can do virtually that you can still create the same type of atmosphere. One of the things that I have found, if you use Microsoft Teams as a communication medium within your own organization, there is an app within Microsoft Teams 
called Viva Insights. Great tool. Look into it because this provides this type of virtual space for your employees. It provides meditation music. It can schedule focus time for your employees. It allows you to do so many different things where you can create a healthier work-life balance, but from a digital virtual perspective. So check out Viva, V-I-V-A Insights in Microsoft Teams if you use that platform. It's great for things such as creating a virtual space for meditation and relaxation as well. And number four is to have family integration days. Designate specific days in the calendar as family integration days. On these days, employees are encouraged to bring their families uh, to work for fun activities, for games, and for informal bonding sessions. This fosters a sense of community and understanding among colleagues and help employees feel supported both at work and in their personal lives. Now, there's always caveats to this, right? You got to determine if this is something that you truly want to implement. If you want to get that involved in the personal lives of your employees, it's, it always comes with considerations and risk that you as a leader have to make sure that you are mindful of. It's a great practice because it does form that sense of community and camaraderie with among the teams, because now you're digging more into a personal level. I will always just say, even though I'm giving you this advice, is to just be considerate of risk that you could run into. You, you, a lot of stuff could be uncovered. So just be very careful. But it is still a great practice. I love these types of family-oriented type of activities that you can do. Bring your kids to work day. Have these family-integrated type of days as well. It's for some people. It's not for all people. So just be considerate of when you implement these types of family integration days what your employees truly, truly like and some things that are off limits in those types of situations. So just some considerations, right? Okay, let's move on to strategy number five, which is to foster a positive and supportive company culture. That if you as a leader and as an organization can create a positive and supportive company culture, it will set the foundation for all motivational work environments. So here are some things that you can do some helpful tips as a leader, as an organization for fostering a positive and supportive company culture. Number one is to embrace random acts of kindness. Encourage employees to engage in spontaneous acts of kindness toward their colleagues. Implement a kindness jar, or it can be something that's virtual because this is a place where employees can drop anonymous notes of appreciation or small gifts for their coworkers. This fosters a sense of camaraderie, empathy, and gratitude within the workplace. Number two is to host failure celebration events. I know, right? We're celebrating failures, but we don't see them as failures. We see those as opportunities for learning. So instead of punishing these failures, celebrate them. Organize regular events where employees share their failure stories and the valuable lessons that they learn from those. This helps to destigmatize failure because people usually see failures as punishments and ridicules. And they can be used in a situation in an environment that you can learn from, an opportunity for growth. This helps your team encourage risk taking, and it also promotes a growth mindset within the organization. Number three is to introduce passion projects time. Set aside a specific amount of time each week, each month for employees to work on personal projects that align with their passions and interests. Even if it's unrelated to their current role, I have found that if you allow employees to tap into the things that they are passionate about, it can aid you as a team, as an organization exponentially. Prime example, I do videography. I got cameras and lights and all these different monitors and microphones and many different things. Can I use that in my work environment? Sure, why not? I can take these same tools that I use to record this podcast, shoot my video segments, and use that to help us expand our learning and development. We could shoot training videos because I know how to shoot videos. We could shoot training videos with all of this equipment. I also like to do graphic design, right? I make all my graphics. I could make graphics for our team, for our learning events, for different things that we have. Instead of having to outsource it to someone, because I have that skill set, I can use that skill set within the 
environment that I am working in with my team. And your team has different things that they know how to do as well. If you have someone that is great at cooking, photography, writing, it doesn't matter what it is, allow them to explore those areas, explore those new ideas, allow them to collaborate with others because this is going to help boost overall creativity and job satisfaction. And number four is to establish a gratitude wall. Dedicate a physical or virtual space in the office for a gratitude wall. Employees can use this platform to express appreciation for their colleagues, help their support or their achievements publicly. This not only reinforces positive behavior, but it also uplifts the overall team spirit. All right, there you have it. Five powerful strategies to create a motivational work environment for your employees by encouraging open communication, providing growth opportunities, recognizing achievements, fostering work-life balance, and cultivating a positive company culture. You can inspire and engage your team. Remember, a motivated workforce is the key to achieving organizational success. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, to unlock your leadership effectiveness, you must master the cheat code. See you next time.